Hey everybody, I got a fun video for y'all this week. We are building a stainless steel steam header. So what this is, is a piece of uh, inch and a quarter schedule 40 pipe. Uh, I opted to weld on a half nipple here. See what I'm getting ready to tack on there is a half nipple that I purchased from McMaster Car. I have a, a pipe threader, but it doesn't really do that great a job on the larger diameter parts. So we just went ahead and bought a uh, half nipple there and welded it on to the uh, body of the uh, header there. Running, uh, just V-ing it out, uh, just welding it on like you would any other pipe here. I'm just kind of putting in uh, my fill pass and then uh, swapping it out here. I've got that Jancy Rotostar there that makes round parts like that really easy. And I'm just welding a cap on this end. Same procedure there, just root pass and then... Uh, fill it in and uh, cap it with some uh, 304 actually no I forget uh, 308 is the uh, stainless steel filler wire I ended up using on this I'm using my uh, dynasty 210 here just because I have it set up on this side of the shop and instead of using a foot pedal I have a uh, push button on the uh, torch here and I'm running about 85 amps or so I might have gone a little heavier on the uh, on the fill pass here but yeah it I really like the push button there for a welding pipe like this because you can just set your amperage, hit the button, and it does the high frequency start. And you can even set your ramp up, ramp down times if you need to mess with your amperage. But pretty much 85 amps was good for this and just kind of let it let it rotate there. I did have to tweak the speed at which my part was rotating. But uh, yeah, as you can see here, it works out pretty well. So I like to get comfortable on a project like this. As you can see, I got my hand propped on those V-blocks there, and then that way I'm just using my uh, fingers there to work the torch back and forth to kind of get a nice weave pattern on the weld. This uh, steam header is really only ever going to see about 125 PSI as a maximum uh, pressure, so it's not like this is a crazy, you know, high pressure, it needs to be x-rayed weld. Uh, just as long as it looks decent, holds, it'll be good. So what I did here is I took some socket weld couplers, uh, put them in the bridge port, and just used an annular cutter to notch out the one side of them there to where the uh, the radius was pretty close to the OD of that inch and quarter pipe. It wasn't perfect, but it was close enough for what I'm doing here. I fixtured everything in the uh, in the strong hand table here. I really like that table for stuff like this. It makes it really fast and easy. I've got some V blocks there on the bottom of it to hold the round pipe, and then uh, I just took some of those angle brackets there and uh, stuck them together there to where I could make sure the alignment on all those uh, all those couplers uh, was perfect and uh, worked out really well. Now on this, I am putting a strong back on here, and also that's going to be the mount for uh, this header as it attaches to the uh, the CIP tank that this is going on. Uh, if you have ever made a uh, steam header like this or any kind of header like that and not put a strong back on it, um, uh, and you've not made it into a banana, I uh, I don't know how you did it, but uh, more power to you. If you don't put something like this on here, like at least a temporary strong back, it will uh, turn into a nice big banana as you weld out all those. Uh, all those uh, ports on the other side so that was a dual purpose to uh, you know keep it from uh, twisting and then also to uh, provide me with a mount to uh, to go to the uh, tank this is going to basically be a, uh, a heater for a 350 gallon water tank um, I'm running an inch and a quarter steam valve uh, going into this and then it's going to go out into uh, four injector nozzles that uh, are going to sit around this tank here so i just wanted kind of a nice way to take the uh, you know inch and a quarter steam line and reduce it down to four uh, half inch uh, you know half inch lines that are going to go to the different nozzles so as you can see here i'm flipping this back and forth i'm trying to not put too much of a bend on that uh, strong back on the bottom there so i'm welding a little bit flipping it over welding the opposite side uh, with stainless steel there like it shrinks so much as it uh, cools there after you weld it that uh, you got to weld a little bit flip it and then uh, kind of go back to the other side there and uh, otherwise you end up turning it into a big banana also so in between uh, passes there, what I'm doing, I've got that Milwaukee uh, cordless fan there. Uh, first time I saw one of those, I thought that was just totally dumb. Why would you want a little fan like that? But after watching a guy use it, totally handy for, uh, you know, just sitting on your bench there and uh, cooling off parts like that. 
So in between different passes like that, you can just go ahead and turn the fan on and let it cool the part off for a few minutes, and it kind of pulls a lot of the heat out of it. So really handy to have a little fan like that. And again, like here, I'm just kind of moving around trying to, again, you know, minimize the heat input on any one piece of the part here, but then also like, uh, you know, weld the opposite side of where I was just, uh, just welding. And then, yep, the TIG finger there that, uh, you know, tips and tricks sells is awesome for sliding around on the, uh, on a table like that. So just using it to slide my hand back and forth there. And, uh, you know, I'm not trying to get crazy. I mean, this is not a, you know, a showpiece part this is going to sit in a uh, cip room in a plant and you know get used a couple times a year so doesn't have to be perfect but you know i try to make my stuff look decent and i'm just uh you know walking the uh you know walking the uh, uh arc back and forth over that trying to get a little bit of a weave going and just trying to make it look pretty decent and uh i'm uh, running a, a ck flex lock torch as you can see there with a, a jazzy Jazzy 10, I believe, is the uh, one in there. That's kind of my go-to stainless steel setup. It's uh, large enough to where you get nice coverage, but also uh, not so large that, uh, you know, you go through a ton of argon. I, I usually run that about uh, 20 to 30 uh, cubic, feet for, cubic feet per hour. Uh, as you see there, like, uh, if I leave the torch sitting for a few minutes, I like to light up on one of those copper blocks on my uh, bench there, just in case I you know, turn the gas off and, uh, or something like that. Uh, or, you know, I've had somebody stand on my argon hose before. So I always like to uh, light up on uh, a copper block like that just to uh, ensure everything is good. And here I'm just going around those, uh, uh, going around the ports on that. And uh, I'm not, you know, again, I'm not trying to do a crazy, you know, insane weld on it because maximum pressure, is, like I said, is 125 PSI. So not, you know, doesn't have to be insane here. But, uh, you know, again, always try to have your work be, uh, you know, nice. At this point in the video, I would like to thank this week's sponsor. That is no one because no one sponsors this video uh if you're interested in seeing more content like this you can head on over to patreon at uh, darlington farm and uh check that out i try to put up some more content uh, over there and some uh you know kind of goings on but uh yeah if you're interested hit that up and uh yeah right here i'm just continuing to weld out the uh, part here and we're going to do some more videos on putting the rest of this uh, setup together and i'll kind of show you how i plumb all this and uh can kind of give you an idea of uh, the uh, calculations involved in figuring the uh, the steam requirements and the uh, heating requirements. Uh, and I don't know if you guys are interested, uh, you know, leave a comment below and I can go through that. It's kind of some dull math, but uh, if you're building something like this and, you know, you're engineering it, it's kind of important to be able to uh, at least get a, you know, back of the envelope calculation as far as, you know, the BTUs required your temperature rise required, you know, your volume of steam or actually your weight of steam and uh, things like that. So if you're interested, I can do a video on that, but uh, it will be pretty boring. Bueller, Bueller. Anyway, we'll go ahead and finish this weld out here. And uh, yeah, this was a good time putting this all together. Thank you all for tuning into this week's video. If you uh, enjoyed this, please hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for more content in the new shop. Thank you all for watching.